I'm in a small suburban neighborhood in Cameron Park, California, and at first glance, this seems like any nice, ordinary, upscale suburban neighborhood. But it doesn't take long to notice a few things that are a little different about this place. Have you ever seen a speed limit sign or a stop sign that's less than three feet off the ground? Some of the houses here have unusually large garage doors. All of the street names seem to have an aviation theme. And why are the streets so wide? This neighborhood is known as an air park, which is a neighborhood that has extra wide streets, extra large garages or even hangars, and extra large driveways for parking airplanes. In a neighborhood like this, it's not too uncommon to see an airplane just taxiing down the street. The reason the signs are so low is so that the airplanes can taxi over them without clipping signs with their wings. The reason the streets are so wide is because you might have an airplane going one way and a car coming the other way, and they need to be able to go past each other. Then there's a gate where you can just go right from your driveway down the street, through the gate, and onto a runway where you can take off and go wherever you need to go. This neighborhood is adjacent to an airstrip, and this neighborhood was built in 1963. I found an article from 2021, and it said that there are 124 houses in this neighborhood. I found an interview online with one of the people who live here, and they said that out of the 120 some odd houses here, about 90 of them have airplanes. A lot of houses with not one, but two planes in the front yard, or even three. I guess you could technically call the airstrip out here an airport, but they only have the one airstrip, and they don't even have a control tower. They do have a radio frequency that pilots can use as a safety precaution and a courtesy to other pilots, so you can announce your presence and your intentions. If you're coming in to land or you're, you want to take off, you can communicate with the other pilots who are listening on that channel. That's about as close to a control tower as you get. This neighborhood is also adjacent to a fairly large man-made lake. There are ducks, geese, swans, and turtles here. There's a path for walking or jogging around the lake, and you can even go fishing here. I was researching online and I learned that some of the people who lived here are retired pilots that still like to fly. Others are currently commercial pilots and fly into work, and others just live here in Cameron Park and work somewhere in the Bay Area. But instead of driving for three plus hours to get to work and then driving three plus hours home, they can fly for about 30 or 40 minutes saves quite a bit of time. And if you have a job in Silicon Valley that pays you enough to afford a place here and an airplane, it makes a lot of sense to spend 30 to 40 minutes instead of three plus hours each way. If you're looking to move here, the houses here are not cheap, but even if you can afford it, they're not necessarily easy to find. Right now, there's only one house for sale. It's a three bed, three bath, 2,080 square foot home and it's listed for $1 million. There's also a vacant lot that is just under half an acre, and that's listed for $410,000. I saw an interview with someone online and they said that the only way to get a house here is to wait for someone to die and then be quick when it gets on the market. That may be a little bit of hyperbole, but it's probably not that far from the truth. Now, personally, I'm not a pilot and I don't intend to ever live in a place like this but I thought it was pretty cool, so I wanted to come back and have another look at it. That's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.